We're at it again, looking at 10 of the best and coolest passives in Summoner's War, independently of the monster they're attached to. These are just very cool mechanics that deserve to get highlighted. And if you like this sort of content, we already have a couple videos on the channel like it in 10 of the best third skills, Elemental and LD edition. And with that in mind, we're keeping today's list to just Elemental monsters. So water, wind, and fire. Number 10, it's Meiho Wang with the gold headband passive. It used to be enough to make it so that he could not get crowd controlled, but now all of a sudden you can't get crowd control and your attack power and speed increase as turns pass or you get attacked. And that stacks up to 10 times. So the results can be really crazy. And I'm all about just getting value for sitting there. Ugh, still tastes bad. Number nine, ventriloquism. A free strip, silence, and attack bar pushback every turn pretty cool. And this actually just got buffed in the most recent balance patch at the time of recording. Number eight, Improvisation, which belongs to Dominic, the Wind Weapon Master. This passive lets you attack additionally on your turn, and the additional attack is true damage. This skill used to be crazy. Well, it actually used to be really bad. Then it got way too good, and now it's fine. So fine, in fact, that it's on the list. But the passive also changes that last hit a little bit depending on your HP. If your Dominic is looking pretty healthy, then it will just deal that true damage, and it's quite a lot of it. If you're below 50%, it's gonna do reduced damage, but it's gonna heal you. Number seven is actually occupied by two different members on the list, Annihilate and Collect Weapons. These passives end up with very similar results, and that's why I wanted to highlight them both instead of giving one to each number. Annihilate grants an instant turn whenever you defeat an enemy on your turn, and it also reduces your cooldown times. Whereas Collect Weapons increases your attack bar by 100%, but it also gives you attack power based on the attack of the enemy that you defeated. So you'll notice that you're actually doing more and more damage as you go. Super fun mechanics, independently of the monsters. Frankly, these are quite fun, even when you take into account the monster they're attached to. But again, we're looking at them in a vacuum. Six is Jet Engine. The impact of this passive is that it lets you build a damage dealer on full tank and speed. I'll loop in Wind and Clouds as well as Might Hurricane on this same entry. Wind and Clouds gives additional damage and some damage reduction too, and Might Hurricane also gives additional damage. The former also gives some attack bar cycling as well as damage reduction. So each one of these at number six is a highly valuable passive regardless of who they're attached to. Number five, Art of Blank Space, which is just one of the coldest names for a passive in Summoner's War in general. I jokingly called out this passive as an answer to critical error in 10 of the best LD third skills in Summoner's War. And I mean it. It is quite the answer. It is the natural predator of Geon. What it effectively does is whenever an ally is stripped, they'll be cleansed, as well as gain an attack bar push. It does more than that, but at risk of being more confusing, it'll just be here for your viewing pleasure. This passive is the reason why Heigang is a great answer to a lot of strip options on an enemy team in RTA. You see Chiwu, you see Gianna, even a more. You can pick a Heigang, and more often than not, you'll just flip the script on the plan that the enemy had for you. It's like the Uno reverse card. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Number four is Salvation Song. This one belongs to Triana, the Wind Heart Magician. This is a skill that prevents death. Triana gains an instant turn right after that as well. This passive makes Triana a staple on arena defenses. Preventing death is such a valuable piece of tech. It's also seen use at SWC in the past, and its host is a four star. It's pretty cool that it's this high on the list. It also comes back quicker than a revive, as most death prevention skills do. Number three, loss of cause and effect. This one belongs to Juno, the Fire Oracle, and it used to not be this good. Now what the passive says is whenever this unit gets a debuff, they'll also gain a speed buff. At the start of their turn, they'll cleanse everything on them and heal their team in proportion to how many debuffs were removed. That essentially means that nothing sticks. Every debuff will be cleansed by the time the unit takes a turn. That is super annoying and it's why it's this high on the list. Second to last on the list, number two, Boiling Blood. It belongs to Vertaheil. Regardless of the rest of the kit, every single hit, as long as it's a crit, will increase attack bar by 20% for all allies. This is a bonkers skill and results in so much attack bar, you'll normally leave your enemies just far behind. Great in dungeons, great in RTA, it's, it's number two. Number one, very closely, Ancient Power that belongs to Tessarion. 
For so long, this was the best and most reliable way to get the rarest debuff in the game applied to your enemies. Oblivion shuts down passives, and that is becoming more important over time. In fact, while Oblivion has become more readily available to other monsters, this probably is still the most reliable way to get it. And that's why it's number one. Unique and cool mechanic. So that's all for the elementals that I'm gonna to cover today. Let me know if there's one that I missed in a comment down below, and if there's enough to make another video, I'd be happy to do so. Otherwise, look forward to the LD episode.